Hello everyone, thank you so much for joining us for our latest online webinar event. My name is Ricky Hill and I'm the e-recruiter and engagement specialist here at the University of California Merced. Thank you once again for joining us. Tonight we will we'll be doing a presentation based on student business services and the name of it tonight is Got Bills, Link Up, Understand, and Be Prepared. Before we get started, I'd like to give you a couple of quick tips so that you can follow along during this webinar. First, to get started, if you would like to adjust your audio settings, you can do so in the lower left corner of your screen. Just go ahead and click on the audio settings option and make those adjustments as you see fit. If you would like to adjust the size of your window, you can do that by clicking on view options and that's at the top portion of your screen. Once again, you'll follow those directions and just make the adjustments as you see fit. Lastly, and most importantly, we definitely hope that you join us for the question and answer portion of tonight's event. It's one of the most important ways that you can get your questions answered tonight, and those will be answered live. To do that, go ahead and look at the bottom of your screen. You should see a Q&A button for question and answer. You'll go ahead and click on that Q&A button, submit your question, and we will get to that throughout the presentation. At this time, I'd like to go ahead and kick things off by handing it over to my colleague, Miguel. Good evening, everyone. I hope you guys have had a great day so far. So my, oh, and thank you, Ricky, for that great introduction. My name is Miguel Mendoza Miramontes, and I'm an account specialist with Student Business Services. Today's webinar is going to be Got Bills, Link Up, Understand, and Be Prepared. Uh, we definitely recommend, um, welcome that you type questions under the, under the Q&A portion of the webinar, and we will be answering them after the presentation. Okay, so let's begin. So for today's topics, we will be going over my account, the detailed account activity, my bill slash billing statements, the deferred payment plan, how to make a payment, the parent pin, electronic funds transfer, also known as direct deposit, and the statement of financial responsibility. Okay. So what we're looking now at now is an example of the My Account homepage. So this is the My Bill student account page. It is your billing portal. It can be accessed through the left-hand side of the My UC Merced student portal, where there will be a link that reads My Bill. Uh, on this, just follow the red laser. We're going to have different boxes like that talk about my account, my recent payments, um, other items available for purchase, parent pin, saved accounts, deferred payment plan, and my bills. The first thing we're going to be looking at over is the detailed account activity. It's going to go back really fast, which can be found under the my account box. It's going to be the second link that reads detailed account activity. Once you click that, it'll take you to this page. The detailed account activity is a great resource for your student account because it updates everything in real time. Uh, say you purchase something with the bookstore and you wanna have those fees added to the student account, it would reflect on the account and on the detailed account activity in real time. Uh, same thing applies if your financial aid are to, is to post or if there's an adjustment on your aid, um, it'll all be reflected in real time. So the way it works, it goes from a newest to oldest uh, from up down up and it'll have your charges listed as well as credits slash payments um, on the top there will be a summary which will show current charges and payments due authorized financial aid and the total amount due okay the next thing we're going to be looking at is if you looked at the right hand side of the my bill student portal there's going to be the billing statements billing statements are generated on the first business day of every month uh, for this month, they were generated on August 3rd. And if you click the view hyperlink, it'll take you to a billing statement. Uh, this is an example of an August 1st one from last year, but the same style applies to this year's that were generated on August 3rd. Um, on the top would show August 3rd as a billing statement, the due date, which for this semester is August 19th, the student ID, uh, any account balance that was previously owed, and the current account balance, as well as balance after authorized aid. Uh, just a reminder that authorized aid is aid that is expected to post onto the student account. Uh, for this semester, aid will be posting on August 18th, as long as all financial aid requirements have been met. And on the bottom of the billing statement, there's going to be the statement details of all the activity that had been generated that month prior. Uh, so all, this, all of these entries were added in July, so that's why they were built in August. Um, if there had been no entries posted in July, it would just show a balance forward. 
And at the very bottom is going to be authorized financial aid, which again is aid that is going to be ready to post as long as all of the requirements have been met. Okay, the next thing we're going to be going over, um, it's pretty important right now, say that your August 19th billing statement or August 19th payment is much higher than you expected and you're not able to afford it all at once. We do offer a payment plan known as the Deferred Payment Plan, um, also abbreviated as DPP. A student can enroll in DPP as long as they don't have a prior term balance that's higher than uh, 500 and as long as the current balance is over 500. Okay, um, the DPP is, so we're gonna click this link, but the DPP is a great resource because it allows you to break your balance into four installments. For this year, they're going to be due on um, August 19th, September 21st, October 20th, and November 20th. Um, to use the service, there is a one-time $4 participation fee, which is collected at the first installment. Uh, the first installment is due by August 19th, but you can pay it any time you sign up for the service. And as long as you go on to that link, all you have to do is click uh, agree to the terms and conditions down here, accept, and then it'll prompt you to make your first installment. Hey, for more information regarding the DPP, the first installment is August 19th, second, September 21st, third, October, October 20th, and lastly, November 20th. Um, DPP enrollment is open now. Um, remember there is that $40 participation fee and it's per semester. So every time a student or parent wants to request to use the DPP enrollment, uh, there is going to be that fee each time. So on back going onto the My Account box on the My Bill, we're going to be going over how to make a payment now. So if you click on the Make a Payment link, uh, online you have the option of using a debit slash credit card. Um, if you use a debit card or a credit card, there will be a 2.75% convenience fee added to it or you can pay with an electronic check. An electronic check is very easy to use. It's kind of like an ACH payment. All you need is your account number and your routing number. It can be a savings account or a checking account. Okay, um, the other options you do have to pay, you can pay in person at the campus cashiering office. They are open until August 19th, Monday through Friday uh, from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. So you do have a small window um, to make payments in person. Okay, so for the parents who are joining us now, um, if your student has not signed up for EF, um, a parent PIN for you, that means you don't have authorization to call or email our office. Um, and for the students who want to set up a peer, parent PIN for your parents, it's super easy to do. All you have to do is go on the bottom left-hand side of your My Bill and click the Add New Hyperlink. The reason why we require a parent PIN is because students are protected by a federal policy known as the Family Education Rights and Privacy Act, also known as FERPA, that basically protects students and their information from anyone else once they enter the university. Uh, they could be a minor, but their privacy is still valued so that we will still not be able to give information to parents and or guardians, um, regardless of their age. So to receive information regarding the student account, call, email us, the student would have to go to this bottom left-hand side on the My Authorized User section, create a parent PIN. It's very easy to do. All this thing, the only thing the student has to do is click Add New and add your demographic information. Um, and that's how our department would know your email to know, make sure that we can actually respond to that email, um, your name, and things like that. And once your student makes a parent PIN, or once you make a parent PIN, the authorized user will receive an email with steps on how to access my bill without needing the student there. So then the authorized user could also make payments on the student's behalf and sign up for DPP. Okay, so the next thing we're going to be going over is um, EFT, also known as electronic funds transfer. Um, so it's better than um, physical checks. So basically, if a student's financial aid is more than enough to cover their balance, they can sign up for EFT, also known as direct deposit, on their student portal. On their MyUC percent student portal, on the left-hand side, there's going to be a link that reads electronic student refund. All the student has to do is input their account number and their routing number. The account number can be a checking account and or a savings account. Um, this way that any refunds that we do process will take three business days to re be received instead of the three to four weeks that it takes for us to mail 
and for you to receive it, the check by mail. Uh, just some things for the fall 2020 timeline. Oh, this did not update, sorry. Um, the dates are the same, all right, but those are, should all be 2020. Uh, it should be August 3rd. That was when the bill was generated. Financial aid was ready to, is ready to disperse on August 18th, as long as all the requirements have been met. And the payment deadline is August 19th, and courses begin on August 26th. Okay, so that was the end of the presentation. What we're going to be doing now is looking over the Q&A and answering them. So the first question we have is, my e-bill is different than my detailed account activity. Why is that? Okay, so your e-bill might be different now, um, or your detailed accounting might be different because e-bills are only generated on the first business day of every month. So your bill was generated up until August 3rd. Any activity that happens after August 3rd, which includes authorized aid, would not be reflected on that e-bill but it would be reflected on the detailed account activity. So that's why we recommend using the detailed account activity more because everything updates in real time in comparison to the e-bill, which is only updated once on the first business day of every month. So there is a question saying, if you are staying at home, what is the use of the CAT card besides it from being an ID? Um, unfortunately, I don't know what uses it has. That's not our department. Um, I would reach out to the CAT card office to see what their um, what uses it has may be it can be used to as a reminder of your ID number, um, but I'm not too sure of what the cat card can do from a remote setting. So I would definitely recommend you contact the cat card office. The next question we have is what does it mean when the amount is negative? So I'm actually going to go back a couple screens and show you what the student is referring to. Uh, let's see here. Okay, so right here, where it says total amount due, if it's ever listed with a negative sign or in parentheses, that means it's a credit balance. Credit balances means that the university owes you that money back. Um, so we do have to refund it, which is why we, I stated that if you are expecting a refund, from a credit balance, which would be listed as a negative or parentheses, we definitely recommend you sign up for electronic funds transfer, also known as EFT, to make sure you get that refund securely and faster within those three business days in compared to the three to four weeks. So one question is, how do we know if all the requirements for financial aid have been met? Uh, so it would just show if you have any outstanding requirements on your checklist. So definitely check that. Um, I would also question if your aid hasn't authorized yet, um, I would reach out to the Students First Center for assistance as soon as possible. Uh, the Students First Center is that one-stop shop that can help you with different departments as well. Um, okay, and there is another question that what if my financial aid doesn't show up on authorized aid? Um, again, I would receive you have any outstanding requirements with your financial aid um, and also reach out to the Students First Center as well as financial aid to see if you do have outstanding requirements or if there's anything else going on with your account that's prohibiting your aid from authorizing. So there's a question that says, is DPP or the Deferred Payment Plan only for students who can't afford tuition? Um, so no, um, the DPP can be used by anyone. It's just a great source for those who can't afford to pay it all at once. Um, if you could afford to pay it all at once, but you still prefer to make payments, DPP is still a great choice. So DPP is available to anyone who has a balance over 500 and doesn't have a prior term balance. Okay, we do have a question um, that says, if I make a payment in person and pay more than what is, than what is due, can that just be credited towards the next payment, which would be due in September? Uh, I'm assuming the student would be signed up for DPP. So if you were to make a payment that was more than your first installment in person, yes, that over amount that you paid would reduce the amounts you have to pay in September, um, October, and November. It would reduce the remaining three installments. Um, but if you weren't in DPP, that excess money you paid would have to be refunded to you because it would sit on your account as a credit balance. Okay, so there's another question that says, if I don't have a checking account, can I put my parents' checking account? Um, we definitely recommend that the student use their own for electronic funds transfer. However, the student has the right to put whatever account they feel comfortable with as their electronic funds transfer account. 
So yes, a student could put their parents' checking account if the student chooses to do so. Um, we don't recommend it, but if the student feels comfortable doing it, then yes, a student can definitely have their parents or guardians checking account listed as their electronic funds transfer. All right. This next question says, my bill was sent and it's charging me for health insurance, but I got my waiver approved. What should I do or will it be updated? Okay. So once you get that email from the health insurance office that says your waiver has been approved, it usually takes 10 to 14 business days or a week or two before your bill gets updated with the waiver. Um, and after those 10 to 14 days, your waiver has not been posted onto your student account. We definitely recommend you reach out to our office and we can investigate further and try to resolve that issue for you. All right. The next question we have is, currently on my bill, I have fees that I won't be able to use because I won't be living on campus and essentially can't benefit from them such as the transportation, recreation, et cetera. Is there any way those fees can be dropped if I won't be living on campus? Uh, so those are mandatory campus space fees. Uh, that's the transportation fee, the recreation fee, the UG association fee. All of those fees um, have been decided by the University of California Regents that they will still be collected in efforts to support the infrastructure of the university. Um, it's what has been decided as of now. However, fees and tuition can change later on in the semester. But for now, they will be collected um, in hopes to support the infrastructure of the campus. Okay. One of the questions is where do we sign up for the electronic transfer or EFT? So EFT can be signed up by on the left hand side of your My UC Merced student portal. There's going to be a link. Um, there's different links on your student portal. One is like my bill, but there will be one that reads electronic student refund. That's electronic student refund. By clicking that link, you will be prompted to sign up, set up a new EFT or new electronic funds transfer. And all you need is your account number what are the UG fees? Okay, so that's the next question. What are the UG fees? Uh, there's different ones that are gonna be on your account listed as UG fees. Um, these are all mandatory campus-based fees and they're meant to support the infrastructure of the campus. This is a good question. So I'm being charged for out-of-state tuition when I'm a California resident. Who do I reach out to to make my cost lower and when does it reflect on my bill? So if you're being charged for out-of-state tuition, uh, that means that our system is not coding you as a California resident. Uh, there must have been a requirement on your student checklist that reads statement of legal residency. The statement of legal residency is a process that you have to, to complete to ensure that you are a California resident and submit documentation. Um, and if you have done that and it's still under processing or it's under incomplete, definitely reach out to the statement of legal residency office their email is going to be SLR, so S as in Sam, L as in Lion, R as in Richard, SLR at ucmerced.edu. Definitely reach out to them if you're having um, difficulties or inquiries of, with your statement of legal residency to make sure that we can lower that um, out-of-state tuition supplemental fee before the payment deadline. Uh, the next question reads, when will the extra money from my financial aid be sent to me? Um, I'm assuming you mean your credit balance. Um, cre we are going to be starting to refund credit balances on August 18th, as long as your aid posts on then. So that's why we make sure that you sign up for electronic funds transfer or make sure your mailing address is up to date before we start issuing those refunds on August 18th. Oh, here's another question. If I already completed my electronic funds transfer, do I have to change my EFT each semester or will it stay the same for the four school years? So your EFT or your electronic funds transfer account will stay the same until you deactivate it. So that account could actually be there for eight, 10 years, but it would be the same until you deactivate it. So no, you don't have to update it each semester. Okay, one of the questions says, if my parents apply for a Parent PLUS loan, can the money be transferred to by checking account? So the Parent PLUS loan uh, would apply to your student account first, and depending on what your parent selects, the excess money can either be refunded to your parent or to you. Um, but it will depend on what option your parent selects when they applied for the loan. Okay. The next question is, can we put more than one parent in the parent pin? Uh, so you can actually put as many people as you want in the parent pin as long as you trust them and are willing to give them authorization. 
Um, it could be a brother, it can be a sister, it can be a parent, uh, both parents. Um, it's whoever you feel comfortable having them know your financial information and asking about your financial information. Okay, one question is how will the technology budget work? So the technology budget um, is basically the financial aid has increased the cost of attendance, which means that your new C, um, cost of attendance and or budget has increased by 1,200. That doesn't necessarily mean they're giving you more financial aid. Um, it just means that there's more room in your budget in case you need to take out a loan for um, additional resources, such as maybe a new laptop or paying your Wi-Fi, things of that nature. Um, but that's what the technology budget work, uh, is. It applied to all student accounts where everyone's cost of attendance went up by 1,200 um, because of the need, the potential need during the current COVID-19 situations and how technology is going to be an increased um, necessity during your academic career this semester. Okay, the next question is how will grants and loans show up as credit? So um, as long as all of your financial aid requirements have been met, let's go back onto the screen here. Um, it'll actually, instead of saying authorized financial aid, the financial aid will just be posted down here under student account activity as a transaction. Uh, so for example, it would say fall semester 2020 and the date the financial aid post, well in this case, as long as all the requirements have been met, would be July 18th, I mean, August 18th, excuse me, and the description of the aid. Um, after that, it'll show you, it, it'll show the aid as credit and or loan as credit for the amount that you were given and or approved for. And that's how financial aid will post onto your account. Um, and it is done semesterly. Uh, let's see here. The next question is how is work study going to work this semester? Uh, that's more of a financial aid question, but from my understanding, there are going to be some jobs that for students that will be able to be worked remotely. So I would definitely reach out to the Career Center for more information. Okay. The next question is, what will happen if you don't pay by the payment deadline? Uh, so there are a couple things that can happen. Uh, you may be assessed a late fee and a hold, depending on the amount that you still owe by the payment deadline. Um, you can also be potentially dropped from your courses um, for non-payment. So if you're dropped from your courses for non-payment, you would definitely receive a warning email before that happens to let you know that you have by such and such date to make the payments or payment arrangements with financial aid uh, to make sure you don't get dropped from your courses for the lack of payment. Uh, so those are the three things that could potentially happen from not paying by the payment deadline. Uh, next question is, when will financial aid post? Again, it will post by August 18th, as long as all the requirements have been met with the financial aid office. Definitely recommend you check your student checklist to ensure that all your requirements have been met. And the next question is, if grants and loans are enough to pay for the whole year, and credit to the account, would students or parents need to make a payment? Um, no, in th these situations, the student would not have to make a payment on the account. And if that aid and loan was more than enough to cover the balance, it would be a credit balance on the account, which we would refund to the student. Okay, the next question is, in my bill, I have a charge for a meal plan, but I'm not dorming. Can I get information on that? Um, if you're still being charged for a meal plan and you're not dorming, please contact our office at 209-228-4114 or email us at sbs at ucmerced.edu so we can investigate that situation further and try to assist you. Um, the next question is how does one pay using a loan taken out or a scholarship? Um, all of those um, loans and or aid that is processed through the financial aid office would just automatically apply to the student account. Okay, the next question of your financial aid changes, will your bill change? Uh, so yes, um, depending on how it changes, if they increase it, your bill would be reduced. If they reduced your aid, your bill will increase. Um, all of that can update automatically on the detailed account activity, which is the page we're currently on on the screen um, in real time. So definitely always look at your detailed account activity for any changes with your aid. Okay, this one was answered later on, um, question was asked again. Uh, it says, apologies, but I missed how we can receive the refunds. So refunds will be sent um, or issued one of two ways, electronically and or by mail. Um, if you sign up for electronic funds transfer, that means we will issue your refunds to you electronically. You can sign up for EFT on the left-hand side of your My UC Merced student portal. 
there's going to be a link that reads electronic funds transfer or electronic student refund, where you would input your account number and or routing number. Uh, it takes around seven days to set up. So we definitely recommend you do that before August 13th to ensure that your refund for the fall would be issued on time. The other method we do use to issue refunds is via mail. It does take around three to four weeks for them to be received though. So we definitely recommend you signing up for EFT. Uh, so this is a really good question. Um, it says in my checklist, it says, um, what is the statement of financial responsibility and what does that mean? So the statement of financial responsibility is a new requirement that we have started to require from students starting this semester. Um, it basically states that students are, are responsible for their fees regardless of financial aid or graduate funding uh, because financial aid and graduate funding can always change. So it's just making sure that students understand that if their aid changes or their funding changes, they are still responsible for the fees. Uh, so that's what the statement of financial responsibility is. We do recommend you read it and confirm that you've understood it before signing it. Okay, so a lot of, uh, we've had a couple of questions of saying, uh, my statement of legal residency is incomplete. Um, and due to that, they are still being charged that supplemental tuition charge. Um, so, if that's the case, we definitely recommend you reach out to them to the SLR email at slr at ucmerced.edu uh, to see if you need additional documentation to make sure they can complete the status of your SLR. Um, additionally, I believe I checked today and the SLR office is processing documentations and requests that were submitted to them, I think, July 28th. Uh, so if you submitted it around July 28th um, or a little after, just make sure, just know that they are going to get to you soon. Um, let's see here. One of the questions says, I declined one of my loans offered to me. Will I still be able to accept them? Um, if you declined a loan uh, on your financial aid page, you can request to reinstatement, uh, re reinstate them. There is going to be a loan adjustment form on the financial aid website that you can fill out and submit to them. Um, and one of the options is I previously declined a loan, please reinstate it. Uh, so you would just have to wait for the financial aid to process that form. Okay, so we just received another question uh, recently. It says, how can I input my financial aid to the bill? Again, your financial aid and your loans will be applied to the bill automatically as long as all your requirements have been met. Um, financial aid is expected to post on your account by August 18th. Okay, the next question is, what is the UG non-residential supplemental tuition fee? Um, that is basically a fee for um, out-of-state tuition um, for anyone who's not a California resident. Um, if you are a California resident and you are being charged this fee, on your student checklist, there should be a requirement that reads a uh, statement of legal residency. So make sure you fill that out. And if you have filled it out, just wait for processing. Right now, the statement of legal residency department or office is processing documentations that have been submitted, um, I think July 28th. So if you submit it a little after, just be patient. Okay, so another question right now that was recent is, so what if, um, or what does it mean when my financial aid, sorry, let me reiterate. What does it mean when my total amount due from my bill is labeled with parentheses? So if your bill is ever labeled with parentheses and or a negative sign, that means that's a credit balance. Um, a credit balance is a credit that we have to refund to the student. So that means that the parentheses or, or negative mean that it's a refund that we are going to issue to you. Um, as soon as financial aid posts onto your student account and that amount is, um, a credit balance and we will begin reissuing issuing refunds on August 18th. Uh, next question is when is the statement of responsibility due and where can I find that exactly? So the actual due date will be posted on your student checklist which is the same place where you would find the statement of financial responsibility. Uh, the statement of financial responsibility can be found on your student checklist. Okay, the next question is, so for my bill, it says my fees are due August 19th. Does that mean I have to pay everything by that date or can I do DPP? Um, as long as you don't have a prior term balance, you can definitely sign up for the deferred payment plan um, and you wouldn't have to pay for your fees all at once. You would be allowed to break them off into four installments. Um, the dates are as follows. 
August 19th, September 21st, October 20th, and November 20th. Uh, here's the next question. Hello, I found that I think there is a mistake on my bill. I sent an email to the financial aid office, but I haven't received a response yet. Um, if you think there's an error on your bill, please contact our office. Our phone number is 209-228-4114. Um, and we will be able to look into your case further. That number again is 209-228-4114. Okay, the next question is, if I accept it alone and don't actually need it, how can I get rid of it? I saw that I need to do something on my portal for the loan. Can I not do it because I don't need the loan? Um, so if you accepted loans and you don't want them, you can still do that loan adjustment form, uh, which would cancel out the loan on your account. Um, and return the funds to the Department of Education. Um, however, for this student's case, they stated that they haven't done the requirements, which would be the loan adjust, um, the loan entrance counseling and the master promissory note. As long as those two requirements haven't been met, the loan wouldn't authorize. So you cannot do the requirements and the loan wouldn't apply to your account. Um, the next question is, when is the last day to take out loans being offered? So you can accept your loans anytime during the academic year. Uh, so you can accept them and get the loans issued to you in October and February, um, as long as it's within the academic year. Um, I'm still being charged for UC SHIP, but, uh, which is the health insurance, but I got an e um, I got an email confirming that it got waived. Uh, so if you got the approval email from the insurance office, it still takes 10 to 14 days. So one to two weeks before the waiver applies to your student account. There is just that little time that it takes to process and post to your student account. Okay, so this is the next question. If I'm not signing up for the deferred payment plan, would the current bill cover the cost until spring or will I receive a bill every month? Uh, so if you're not signing up for the different payment plan and you pay your balance all at once on August 19th, um, you can still potentially be charged for small things here and there uh, up until spring. So I would just recommend checking your, bill, um, your billing statement every month just to make sure that you still have a good standing with your student account and the university. Uh, but typically the only thing that gets charged halfway through the semester might be an inclusive access fee. Uh, but there still might be other small fees that might get charged or your aid may change. So just always check your student account at least once a month. Um, and this goes for everyone just to make sure that, again, your account is in good standing and you're in good standing with the university. Um, so the next question is, how do I check if my EFT was established? So EFT takes seven days after you submitted your application. Um, Another good way to check is if your EFT wasn't established, our office actually emails you letting you know that you attempted to submit an EFT, but it was rejected. So if you don't get a rejection email, that probably, probably means it went through. Uh, if not, you can always check back on that student electronic refund link to verify if your EFT has been established. Uh, but again, it won't show until after the seven days. Okay, so here's another question. It says, how come the under my detailed account activity it states that I'm getting a refund because my financial aid exceeds my tuition, but under my bill um, section, when I click on the view bill, it states that I owe money. So the reason might, this actually might be the reason for a lot of you, and that's because financial aid didn't authorize until after we sent out the bills for August. So um, that's why that's, the, for most of you, the students, sorry, for most of you, your billing statement won't reflect authorized aid, which is why it might show that you owe money. But your detailed account activity will show that authorized aid, which is why in some cases you might see either a reduced balance or a credit balance where you would receive a refund. Uh, so always go off your detailed account activity when it's been a couple of days after the first business day of the month. Uh, so the next question is, if I plan to do work study, would I still have to pay my fees before the deadline? Uh, so yes, um, work study does not apply towards your student account. Work study has to be worked, um, the funds have to be worked for, and you would be paid on a biweekly basis. Uh, more information on how work study works would be on the financial aid office website under work study. Um, and again, for those, I do see a couple more questions about is work study still going to happen this semester? The answer is yes. I know some on-campus employment 
I mean, sorry, some campus employment for students would be offered remotely now. Uh, you would just have to check on the career site website. Um, I'm seeing a lot of questions of where can I get the cat card? How do I get the cat card? Um, unfortunately, I don't know the answer to that, but I definitely recommend reaching out to the cat card office um, and emailing them. Um, I believe maybe more information can also be found on the admitted students website or just the cat card office website. Uh, so the next question is, does the bill due on the 19th cover the cost of the entire fall semester? Uh, yes. So the August 19th billing due date is for the fall semester. Oh, and also um, my colleague Ricky has put in some contact information um, on the chat for the Students First Center as well as the Cat Card Office. Thank you, Ricky. Okay, let's see here. I'm also seeing a lot of questions about why is it my scholarship applying onto my account um, or why it has into my loan applied. Just make sure that for any financial questions you have, just make sure that all your requirements have been met um, on your student checklist, that you've submitted maybe your dependent verification worksheet um, and that your processing has been completed. Um, and if you still have more questions and it's because your A still hasn't been authorized, definitely reach out to the Students First Center. Um, again, their contact information is on the chat. Okay, the next question is, I know I am able to accept less of the amount, um, a lesser amount of the student loan, but I, can I apply for a larger amount? Um, for that, you would have to reach out to the FinAid office um, and maybe up send, submit that um, loan adjustment form. Um, I do believe it's on a case by case. Uh, so maybe reach out to the Students First Center to see what they suggest first. Um, one question is saying, when trying to put my SIR or pay my SIR, I made a two payments, is there a way to get that refund um, back to, one refunded back to me? Um, I sent one check by mail and the other one online. Uh, please reach out to our office so we can look for both payments and make sure that um, one has been refunded. Um, again, our office number, I will actually type that out on the chat. So that is going to be our phone number, 209 and if you need to email us as well, our email is sbs at ucmerced.edu. So the next question is, what are the students voted fees for? Uh, so um, student association voted fees are campus-based fees. Um, every university in the UC system is able to vote for a certain amount that can be charged for departments, um, which is in our case are the mandatory campus-based fees, which have been asked such as um, the transportation fee, the early childhood fee, um, recreation fee, association fee. All those fees are mandatory campus-based fees and they do support the infrastructure of the campus. And it has been decided for now by the University of California Regents that they will still be collected in effort to support the campus. Um, however, that can change later on in the semester. Um, quick question is, is there a due date for when we're supposed to make the first payment on our bill for the fall semester? Yes, that due date is August 19th. Oh, this is another question. Do we have to sign up for electronic funds transfer? You do not have to sign up for EFT. You can um, opt out and just get your refunds by mail. Um, it's just that in the past, we, I will be honest, we have had checks get lost in the mail because maybe the student's mailing address isn't updated. Um, and right now mailing services might not be the most secure with coronavirus. I know a lot of um, mail has been lost um, even outside of our university. Uh, so that's why just electronic funds transfer is more secure, it's faster, which is why we definitely advise that you sign up for EFT, but it's definitely not a requirement. Um, this question is saying, I am trying to sign up for EFT, but cannot find the location of where to set it up. Uh, so you can, again, you can sign up for EFT on the left-hand side of your My UC Merced student portal. There's going to be a link that reads electronic student refund. Um, and that's where you would go to sign up for EFT. Um, this other question is, can I pay my fees before the August 19th payment deadline? Yes, so you could definitely pay all your fees before then. Um, it, the August 19th payment deadline is just when you have up, up until to pay for the university fees. Um, let's see here. Again, another question is, how do we know financial aid requirements have been met? Um, you, it would show if you have any outstanding requirements from their office on your student checklist, as well as your My Financial Aid portal. 
This qu uh, next question is, I signed up for DTPP because they told us in orientation to do so. I later came up to find out that I did not need to pay and received aid. Since I paid out of pocket, will I get that money refunded? Um, yes. So if your financial aid covers the remaining DPP installments and it was more than enough to cover them, um, as well as also partially re refund you, then yes, all that amount would be refunded to you. So the next question is, what if the SLR office hasn't asked for any documentation on my end? Um, typically, uh, that means it's still being under reviewed. So I would just wait for them to process it. Um, again, the SLR office is currently reviewing documentation and or just submissions um, that were submitted by, on, by or on August 1st, July 28th to August 1st, I think is what they're working on right now. Um, this one was kind of recent. It is, will the detailed account activity be different from the monthly e-bill page? Yes, the detailed account activity is posted and updated in real time, while the e-bill page is a billing statement that is only generated once a month, and it's generated from the activity that happened in the previous month and any past due balance. Uh, so the detailed account activity will always be uh, updated in real time and more accurate. Uh, the next question is, so if we got waived for insurance and it takes two weeks uh, to change on your bill, do we still have to pay that amount that it is still being charged? Um, if you are able to, we definitely recommend that you still pay it out of pocket just to make sure you don't um, get any late fees or holds on your account. And then once the waiver posts onto the account, you would be refunded for that out of pocket payment. Um, the next question is, can we still sign up or submit the SLR? Uh, you can submit the SLR still. Uh, just know that it will take time to get processed and it may not be in time for the payment deadline. Uh, so the next question is, will my, be, my fees be the same for each semester? Uh, so typically they can change, but they typically also stay the same. Um, so like the main fees such as the mandatory campus-based fees stay the same. Um, the health insurance fee does change. Um, it goes a little more in the spring just because it also covers summer insurance coverage. Um, another thing that doesn't change is tuition and student services fees. Um, other small things that can change, maybe your one of your courses has like um, a course material fee. So that's one thing that can change by semester. But typically there isn't a big change between semester charges unless you maybe lived on campus one semester and then decide not to live on campus the next or vice versa. Uh, next question is, does my fee apply to books and supplies? Uh, so your cost of attendance when you're awarded by the financial aid office um, takes into account books and supplies, but you're not billed for books and supplies by the university. So you would have to get your books and supplies out of your own um, money and or the money that you're refunded by the financial aid office. So let's see here. Um, unfortunately, it looks like we are out of time for this webinar. Um, I do hope I was able to answer most of your questions. Um, and I did have um, a great time with this presentation. I hope you found it educational. Um, if you do need um, more assistance, please reach out to our office. We're more than willing to help. Again, I'm going to put our contact information on the chat for one last time. Uh, so please feel free to reach out if you need more assistance. Um, at this point, I am going to go ahead and pass it over to my colleague, Ricky. Thank you so much, Miguel. And thank everyone for joining us tonight. This has been a fantastic opportunity for you to get great uh, questions answered by Miguel, one of our experts in the Student Business Services Office. So once again, a big thank you to our expert panel that it did include, Miguel. Uh, once again, though, we just want to let you know that we do have other events that are upcoming, and this event in particular was one that we did record, so you will have access to the recording within a couple of days. If you'd like to take a look at the upcoming events or also access recordings such as this one, you can do so at the website of admissions.ucmerced.com dot edu slash webinars. Once again, it is admissions.ucmerced.edu slash webinars. Like I said, you will find great information there of upcoming events as well as past events where we do have the recordings available. Once again, a big thank you to Miguel for the Got Bills Link Up, Understand, and Be Prepared presentation that we did offer you tonight. And once again, my name is Ricky Hill, and on behalf of all of my colleagues at the University of California Merced, thank you so much for joining us. Have a wonderful evening.